Radio. We're going to try to cover our local sports scene before we move on to anything else. We always try to give the local sports scene love. You know, we're talking about the Braves, the Hawks, the Thrashers, and what's going on here at KSU. And uh, I just want to start us off by talking about KSU a little bit, and then we can just move on to our other things. Mr. Morris, I know you got some stuff about the Braves, and LT, you got some stuff about the uh, Falcons you want to talk about, and also Francis. But... KSU is doing big things. I'm so very proud of, of our school right now. About to open up the brand new club sports and intramural sports facility uh, over by uh, Brand Smart. The facility is sitting on about eight acres of six acres right now, two, two practice fields, and also, uh, also the indoor uh, speed, agility, and training facility. So, hey, I would encourage everybody that can to get involved with club and intramural sports so you can use those facilities that we pay so much for uh, every semester here at KSU. But other than that, big things going on with the Braves, Mr. Morris. Man, I'm tell I've been telling y'all all, all this summer, whenever we've been talking to Braves, and you kind of push it aside right now, <laughs> this is the time, guys. The Braves have been on a tear lately. Uh, they're the hottest team since the All-Star break in the National League with the best record of 17-9. I mean, they're, they're tearing it up. They swept the, the Washington Nationals in a, in a two-game series, and they're coming in to, to one of the biggest series of the year with the Philadelphia Phillies. And right now, listeners, you know, I want you to close your eyes and think back to Bad Boys 2, when right before they're going to bust those guys up, they're walking down that hall just strutting, you know, <laughs> cocking their guns, loading it all up. Right, here, That is what the Braves are right wow, now in wow. this season. Wow. Wow. That is the moment right here, and you know it's going to be a huge week weekend with with Friday starting off. Joe Blanton and Jair Jurgens uh, going out to the post for both their teams, and, and it's going to be exciting. I mean, I'm jacked up, you know, and, and I think I'm going to give you one one nugget right here. The the key to the series for the Braves, if the Braves are to win this series, they have to score four runs. They're 53 and 12 this year when they score four runs or more. And, and the good thing for the Braves is every game that they've played the Phillies, they've, they've scored more than four runs. Like we were talking about in our pre-show meeting, the Braves are all averaging giving up 2.5 runs to the Phillies in their nine games that they've played them already. And that is huge. When you can limit one of the most potent offenses to only two to three runs a game, that is just enormous. And, you know, I think the Braves' offense is going to turn around with um, Nate McLeod coming back this Friday and Omar Infante making some rehab starts. It's going to be exciting stuff for the Braves coming into these later months, which, you know, for the past three years, we haven't been excited about Braves baseball in August and September. So, you know, i got to get it all out there. You know, this is, this is it. we gotta, we got to make a good push right here. So. KSU Sports Radio. L. so let's talk a little bit about the Falcons. A lot going on with the Falcons, uh, especially Harry Douglas going out with the season-ending injury. So how, how do you think they're going to be able to replace uh, Harry Douglas or, or compensate for his loss, Al? Well, the thing about it is I think it's going to I think that's going to mean more catches for Tony Gonzalez, even though, like, you know, he says obviously he was brought in to catch the ball. He was more brought in for third down and also uh, the, 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 the Falcons' trouble in the red zone and to get the ball in the end zone. But I think it's going to mean more catches for him. And also, I think it's going to mean more playing time for Georgia's own Thomas Brown because I think, uh, obviously, Harry Douglas was the Falcons' main kickoff, retu uh, kickoff return and punt return specialist. But I think Thomas Brown is going to fill that role on his team. I thought he was going to do that last year before he got hurt. Um, he's obviously not the prototypical punt return, kick return guy. No normally, they're the smaller, quicker guys like a Harry Douglas. 
But I think that Thomas Brown is in the same mold as Brian Dawkins. I said that earlier. He's a he's a running back that he hits the he hits the hole quickly. He can make the first guy miss, and he breaks tackles because he's strong. He's a pound for pound the strongest person to ever come through the University of Georgia. And I, I watched this kid. I, I mean, he was the same, he was there at the same time as senior year with No Sean, and I watched him splitting carries. And he got hurt, and a lot of people forget as good as No Sean was. He was Thomas Brown's backup until Thomas Brown got hurt. Thomas Brown, he's out of uh, Tucker, Tucker. Out of Tucker, Georgia. Georgia. Right, right, exactly. And Tom, um, Thomas Brown, again, like, he carried a, a lot of the load there. You know, Noshon got a lot of the hype, but he was there to get those those yard, the tough yards, those two- and three-yard runs that, you know, kept Noshon from getting the heavy hits. I mean, he took a, a big brunt of the, wor- of the workload, and, and that's what a lot of folks forget that year. Uh, Because Noshawn was on all the highlight reels, but Thomas Brown was a solid back, and he could really pick up some some tough yards when you needed him to. Right. This is KSU Sports Radio, Uncle Goody, Mr. Morris, Francis the Freshman, and LT.